Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor and Whale Artifacts, the new update for Star Trek Online, the expansion of Agents of Yesterday, bringing us some new content is finally out in the game. This video is going to go over all the new things you can do with this new update. Because after all, that's the question, right? You want to know what to do in the game. You come to Star Trek Online, you see there's a new big update, they even have a name for it called Artifacts, and you ask yourself, what do I do with it all now? I'm here, I'm in the game, what do we do? Well, quite simply, that's what we're going to find out in this video. Um, one of the first things you could do, actually, is go play the featured episode. Because they have released a one episode, just one, one mission, one new playable mission right now called Echoes of Light. And if you just open up your mission window like this, you'll see it. It's called Feature Series Echo, Echoes of Light. Uh, click that. You can click Hail and you can go play the mission. I've already made a video on this mission. I'll put a link up top. You can check my playthrough of this mission out. Uh, I did a whole playthrough of it, and at the end of that video, I took the reward that you get from the mission, and I took it down on ground combat, and uh, just took a quick look at it there. So you can s look at all that and see if that might interest you. Uh, but this new episode is going to open up an entire arc of episodes, a storyline that we're going to get into. I won't spoil it for you here. I won't say anything about it, but it's going to be pretty awesome. There's a big mystery in that mission and a discovery that's pretty darn awesome. So I definitely recommend playing that mission. Uh, you can play it every week and there will be new rewards every week because there is a space set that is going to be offered in that mission as mission rewards, but they don't have all the pieces there yet. You have to wait for all of them to come out. So there's number one thing. Let's look quickly at the help because oftentimes people don't know this, but at the top of the help and support, they always have like what's new in the latest thing. And right now it says what's new in Agents of Yesterday artifacts. So you can actually bring this up yourself and kind of read over this to get an idea of what's new. However, know that this does not cover every single thing that's new. What you really need to do is go to the Star Trek Online webpage and look at the, the uh, patch updates for artifacts that came out on Tuesday. You need to look for those updates and that's going to tell you every little single thing they changed or added because it doesn't go over everything here. Um, and in fact, I, I will do that in this video after we go over all this and look at some things I'm going to switch over to the web and we're going to Look at some of the things that those patch updates state Because there are some things in there that's not listed here And I think you, you guys will find interesting some things that I did not know were coming in fact uh, Was total shock to me and I'm really surprised by it. Okay, first of all Agents of Yesterday Artifacts is now available. Of course, that's already been out in this new, or Agents of Yesterday has already been out, I should say. Artifacts is the new update. Artifacts is now available in this new update for Star Trek Online. Captains join forces with the Lucari to explore the dangerous frontiers of the Alpha Quadrant in a new featured episode. A new fleet holding featuring Starbase K-13 arrives, allowing players to advance the station to earn exciting new rewards. Kits and kit modules have been revamped in this update and exciting new graphics quality enhancements are online. For information, go visit the website. Graphics quality improvements, you can definitely see those right here right now. Um, a graphics quality update has arrived in Star Trek Online. New lighting technology that will significantly improve visual quality has been added, bringing it in line with the recent console release of the game. Check these new improvements out under the Options tab. Uh, mine is enabled, it's called Lighting 2.0, and we'll take a look at some of these changes here in this video, but I, I want to make a specific video looking specifically at that in greater detail in the future. Uh, we've got a new fleet holding, Starbase K-13, 
returns to 2410 after being lost in time for over 140 years. The legendary station is now a fleet holding. Advancing this holding to completion will grant many new options to players. Echoes of Light is a new featured episode. The Lucari are launching exploration, blah, blah, blah. You go play that mission. We just went over that. And then revamped uh, kits and kit, kit modules. I didn't know this was coming until it happened. But the kit and kit modules have been revamped in several ways. Kit modules are now directly equipped on their status page. Kits and most kit modules can now be upgraded. That's a big change from this game. Um, in fact, what may happen is when you first log into this game, you will find buttons missing on your hotbar down here. When I first logged in, like I had several missing uh, items. My powers were gone, and I was like, what the heck? So I went to my status page, and all of my kit modules were in my inventory. Uh, and that is because kit modules have now been decoupled from kit frames. And by decoupled, I mean it is not tied into specific kit frame slots that they had to before. For example, I have a uh, medic thing here, a medical tricorder. This had to be put into like a specific medic slot on your kit. It couldn't go in any other type of slot and different powers slotted into different things. You had like assault kit modules and you had mechanic and fabrication and you know, so all these different types of modules and they only fit in sp specific frame slots. And that limited how you could set up your kit frames or your kit modules because you could only put what was supported by that, by that, by that kit. You know, some kits would have a limit on how many different types of modules it supported that has all been that is all gone now and i am so thrilled and happy about that so what this means is here's my kit that i've been using for a very long time it's here now and i can take my module modules out separately and they're not tied into the kit at all see that completely separate so i can now have whatever kit i want and i can put in uh, whatever science modules I want or universal modules. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to use tactical or engineering, but any any type of science module now I can use. So it doesn't, I guess it just doesn't have, you know, a type anymore. It's not called a specific kind of module now. It's either just science, engineering, or tactical. Makes it so much easier and gives you so much more flexibility and will give users so much more uniqueness in how they want to build their kits out. So I love this idea. I'm glad they finally done this. It is, I think this was, this right here is the best way to do that. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's some thunder out there. Um, so this is absolutely the best way to do it. I wish they had done this from the beginning. Obviously they did not, but they finally got here and I am so happy with that move. In addition to that move, uh, these are now upgradable. And I have been asking for this for a long time actually. If I right click on these, you will now see they have upgrade item on my kit modules. Check that out. So I can go to a kit module. This one's already Mark 12 Epic. But I bet, yeah, it'll go up to Mark 14 now. So Mark 14 Epic on some of these modules. This one, I guess you'll just have to click it to see what it'll, you know, what it'll, if it'll upgrade in Mark level. And I'm, it's looking like all of these that I have here will. Yes, and uh, probably in quality as well. Now I was reading in the patch notes that some of the modules don't have um, upgrade paths or are limited to certain rarities or mark levels. So there are some, and it might be related to universal modules that are that way. Some of the special modules you get as well are also limited. So I'm not sure, you'll just have to kind of play around with that and find out yourself which ones. Um, but we'll go read the patch notes because it does tell a little bit more there. If, you're, if you just aren't sure if something will upgrade, all you got to do is right click it from your inventory. If it's got an upgrade item, it's upgradable. And then you can see what the next upgrade would be. It'll go to, this one will go to Mark 13 here. So, easy peasy. But I like the fact that all of this is decoupled. Um, I don't have to slot 
I don't have to slot modules into specific kits anymore. It's just all right there. However, I want to configure my modules and my different kit frames. I guess they're just called kits now. Just It's just whatever kit I want to put on here. A science kit, obviously, I can do. So that is, that is cool. Now, of course, I messed up on my buttons, but that's okay. Well, I'll fix that later. So, kits. Go update your kits. Check out upgrading the modules. Um, oh, kit frames. Can you upgrade kit frames? Let's see. Yes, you can upgrade kit frames. So the kits themselves can also be upgraded. Holy crap. I'm loving it. I am loving it. So there you go. Um, I like what they've done with kits here. So that's something you can go play with with this new update. Go on all your characters, set up your kit frames. Go make sure everything is upgraded to the levels you want, switch things around, add some new modules in. You've got a lot more flexibility now with that than you ever had before. So that is awesome. Uh, let us take a look at, let's see what else, the, the K-13 fleet holding. That's another big thing with this update. Obviously you're not going to have this unless you're in a fleet. So you have to be in a fleet, of course. But if you do, or are, you will now find old, under your fleet holding tab, K-13. So this is um, a completely separate space station. You can fly to this station. It is in space. There's, I will show you where it's located, actually. Um, but you can't actually go to it until you unlock, I think, Tier 1 or something. Or whatever. So Because I tried going there, and it, it'll let you go there, but it won't let you like beam onto it yet. You have to you have to make it like a certain level in order to beam onto it. But as you can see, our our fleet is um, in progress of working on this. We're putting all our resources in the fleet toward K13 right now to level it up. So it's one of those things that's just going to take a lot of time. Obviously, if you've got a big fleet, it'll go faster. You got a small fleet, it's just going to take longer. But we can quickly look and see what unlocks and what's uh, available with this. Under K-13 uh, Tier 1, you unlock the Ship Selector, Retrofit Engineering Wing, Xenotechnology Wing, and Biologist Facilities, and you can transwarp to K-13. On Tier 2, you get Mail Access, Bank Access, Enhanced bio Biologist Facility, and Interfleet Shuttle. And then Tier 3 is Exchange Access, Superior Biologist Facility, and Personal Tailor Contact with a unique costume. So this will have a unique costume when you unlock the final tier. I will definitely be getting that Fleet Star Base costume. Under Retrofit Engineering, you'll notice there's only two types here. You've got Retrofit Engineering and Xenotech Research. That's definitely new. Never had that before. Um, we have, under Tier 1 of Retrofit Engineering, Fleet 23rd Century Ground Weapons and 23rd Century Uncommon Duty Officers. We've got Fleet 23rd Century Space Weapons and 23rd Century Duty Officers, and Ultra Rare 23rd Century Duty Officers, and a very rare 23rd Century, 23rd Century Bridge Officers, as well as 23rd Century Bridge Officer Training manual, Manuals. As you can see, there is a 23rd Century focus here. This is the Starbase that's really going to fill out your Agents of Yesterday Temporal Recruit Faction character because this is the star base where you're going to be able to get 23rd century equipment from. This is a big deal because up till now they haven't had that. So this is a big deal. This is really going to make the 23rd century faction feel a little bit more like a faction. It'll be a little more fleshed out. Of course you've got to be in a fleet to have these things but if you are it's really going to help that 23rd century character. All right, under Xenotech, you've got 23rd Century Kit Modules, Kligax. Xenotech Engineering Consoles with Resistance Focus. 23rd Century Kit Modules, Kelvin Status Belt, and Staff of Landru. I remember that episode, Landru. Landru. Um, Xenotech Engineering Console with Turn Rate Focus and a Xenotech Engineering Console with EPS Focus and 23rd Century Kit Modules, Methuselah Drone. I have no idea what that is. However, I do recognize the Nomad Support Drone. Uh, the Nomad Drone. It was in an episode of TOS. So these are some very TOS 
the original Star Trek related things and I'm highly looking forward to that that's pretty awesome um, and as you can see Xenotech is a big part of that um, a, a big part of whatever that's going to be and I look forward to seeing what all that gear is going to look like now once we unlock our K-13 excuse me and I'm able to take a tour through it I will go through and make another video and kind of show you what's available on K-13 and what gear you can buy and that sort of thing um, in fact, I may do a series about that because I don't think I've gone to the Fleet Star Base and done that for y'all. And I know I haven't done the Dilithium Mine or the Embassy. I might or might not have done the Research Lab, probably not the Spire. So I think what I will do, and this is a good idea that I just now came up with on the fly, is make a series of videos since I do have access to all these Fleet Holdings. Uh, I can show you and take a tour of all these fleet holdings and show you what gear is available uh, from those from those uh, star bases that way you will know if you are not in a fleet for example maybe some things you might be missing and how you could join a fleet and then get those things or um, if you are in a fleet maybe you're just not aware of some of those things and you'll know what's there once you unlock your fleet holdings you know to maximum level so i think a series of videos on that is in order and i think that would be pretty fun but anyway k13 here for this new update that's a big deal so get working on that fleet project what else can we take a look at obviously um echoes of light kit modules fleet holding graphic improvements that is another big update here um this is called lighting 2.0 is what they're calling this they actually have a name for it now to, in order to run this you need a dx11 direct x11 capable video cards or upwards uh, if you are running dx9 or dx10 this will not work you do need dx11 thankfully dx11 you know you don't need windows 10 or anything like that for for dx11 um, but you do need a, a a video card in the last two or three generations or something to support dx11 um, but dx11 and up and you'll be just fine it's not a graphically demanding setting so far in my testing it is not graphically demanding but i have not tried it on a lower end gpu if you go to options and uh, display, or graphics rather, rather advance, <laughs> no graphics, that's right, um, you will see it under here under lights. Lighting 2.0 enables clustered forward, uh, forward shading, global illumination with light probes, and an improved HDR system. So turn that on if you want the latest, greatest stuff. Also make sure to turn on dynamic lighting. This changes the lighting based on the environment and is also part of the new system. Um, and then of course, just make sure you set your other settings appropriately, you know, for the performance you need. Uh, I have everything maxed out on my system and it runs very smooth. Uh, as you can see, I'm just running total max settings, lighting 2.0, everything is as far as it will go. Uh, one thing that some people forget or may not know about is if you go under the advanced tab, you will find two other graphics settings that will that will affect your graphic ability, your graphic quality, and that is world texture detail and character texture detail. These are big ones, and I don't know why they put these two in this separate menu. I think they need to put it under the regular graphics menu, but anyway, you have to go here because the default on these settings is 100%. But as you can see, the maximum setting is 200%. So you can actually take these two quality levels up much higher than the default. So if you want the best texture quality that the game has to offer, both on the character and the environment, make sure to go to the advanced tab and crank up that world texture and character texture detail. Uh, a lot of people overlook that because they don't know it's there but now you do, so you'll be much happier, right? And then of course under your display settings, this is where you want to set your DX11 mode or um, you know, if you don't support that, if you don't support that, you'll only have DX9 and then you won't get the lighting 2.0. Um, 
and then of course set your anti-aliasing and all that. Uh, they've, I think they've added FXAA, I believe that's brand new. I don't recall seeing that in the past, uh, so that may be new unless, I, unless it has been there and I just overlooked it. Um, but FXAA is an, a very good alternative to MSAA or TXAA because it is very fast. It's a shader-based anti-aliasing method, which means it's a post-processing effect. Um, it does not use video RAM or VRAM uh, memory bandwidth or capacity like MSAA or TXAA uses. So it's a shader-based post-processing effect and it does a comparable job to 4X MSAA for practically no performance hit. So if you are looking at a slower video card or lower end or even mid-range and you are sacrificing video quality settings, uh, turn your AA setting to FXAA instead and that should give you some performance back if you are at MSAA or otherwise and then you can go turn other quality settings up instead and FXAA will be plenty good enough for you. Um, it's a very good alternative to MSAA. Um, MSAA has the negative consequences that it cannot anti-alias alpha textures so things like foliage, cert a lot, there are certain edges in this game, especially on the out, out, outside in the space on the edges of ships and things that will not get anti-aliased with MSAA, that's not really your best option for AA. It's also very slow because it's just traditional MSAA. TXAA is a better anti-aliasing quality. It will anti-alias those alpha textures and give you a better quality. It is also, a, I, th I think, a pretty substantial performance hit on slow GPUs. But on high-end GPUs, you'll have no problem with it. You can see I'm running TXAA now, and I've got a solid 60 FPS on this video card. Um, but this is a high-end video card. So, you know, anything mid-range or lower, maybe not so much. That's where you want to use FXAA instead. But play around with it and look for the best quality. Sorry about that. I thought I heard something. Um... And what some of the places you'll, you want to look at for anti-aliasing quality is like right here. I can see Jaggies with the setting I'm using here. Hold on a second. That's weird. I've got some kind of weird noise in my headphone that just started. And I'm not sure where it's from. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. It's weird. All right. Anyway, if you look up here where these little people, things, stick figures are walking... Uh, you can see jaggy edges on this window here, and that's because that's an alpha texture. Uh, if you set your option, I don't know if you'll see it in this video, you might. But if I change it to FXAA, that should actually smooth out. Yeah, see, that is much better. Uh, hopefully this will show up in the video. But with FXAA, that, uh, those, those edges around that window are much better. They're not as aliased. However, some of the other edges are just a little bit more alias than I had with, with uh, TXAA. Um, but things, FXAA will really help on like the foliage out here and all these trees and stuff. Um, play around with it and see what works best for you. Um, TXAA gives me better anti-aliasing quality on the edges it works on, but the edges it doesn't work on, then I have worse quality, so... I don't know. You'll have to play around with it yourself. I guess I went a little off there on AA stuff. Eh, that's me. That's what I do. Um, okay, but what we can look at, or what I wanted to look at, was the lighting differences. The first thing you will notice... I know what that sound is. That was bothering me, driving me crazy there blowing leaves outside. They've got a leaf blower. That's what it is. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I thought I was hearing something. Um, okay. So in the exchange, very bright. You can see how the, um, the uh, whatever that's called, <laughs> the sparkly bits on things you can access 
is a little different as well. Very bright everywhere you go. Now, there has been a lot of chatter in the chat about people not liking the brightness, but I've got to say, I would think a space station would be bright. You know, you've got a lot of different aliens in here, and you want everybody to see where they're going and not run into each one into each other. I would think that a space dock would be a very bright place, especially the the part the general part of it where everybody congregates. You can kind of see how the new lighting system is working because like each of these lights here, they're actually creating a real dynamic light on the ground now. So you have the spotlights here on the ground that you can actually see now because they are actually emitting cylindrical lights down onto the floor. That's new. Look how many shadows she's emitting. See that? That's because of the overlying light. You didn't used to get that before because they didn't have light that could do that. But you get these overlying shadow patterns now because of all the different light sources around throwing light in different directions. So that's really cool. However, what it has emphasized, I've noticed, is the poor shadow edges they have. Um, now they've got good lighting, but then it makes things like shadows look worse. If you look on the edges of the shadows, they're very blocky. And that means they are not using a good form of soft shadow edges. And um, so a, a lighting system like this emphasizes some of those other shortcomings they have. So they actually now need to bump up the shadows. I mean, they really do. They need new shadow technology now. We need Shadows 2.0. In addition to shadows, another thing that has not been updated is ambient occlusion. They're still using their old ambient occlusion, and boy, you can see it here. If you look on the crack here between this texture and this texture, and you look on the shadowing of that, you can see it crawling and moving and... Oh, it just looks so terrible, actually, and it's in enhanced even worse with the lighting. On this edge here, going down here, that uh, is uh, screen, screen space ambient occlusion, I think is what they're using, SSAO, just plain old SSAO, but it's like a primitive form of it. So they really need to bump up uh, ambient occlusion. occlusion. If they could give us a, a, a better ambient occlusion and better shadows, I think this game would look just so much better. And in addition to that, the other thing that the uh, enhanced lighting really bumps up is the quality of the texture. You can really start to see how low quality these textures actually are now that everything's brighter. Uh, you will actually see how low, how, how much of a low resolution these textures are on everything. Um, it's just something if you look closely at, I mean if you know what you're looking at, you can really tell. But look on, look on this edge right here, like see, see this little shadowing that's between the edge of this texture and the edge of this texture? That's ambient occlusion and look as I move the camera around. See how it kind of sparkles and is blocky right there? It looks weird. That's that's poor, poor, poor ambient occlusion. I'm sure they know all this. It's just, you know, to invest the money in it to make those updates is probably a big investment. But I think it would be worth it. Anyway, um, uh, in here is one of the best examples of this new lighting as the sun comes in look at this this see now this is really emphasizing how bad the edge of that shadow is so here's the sun coming through the window and with the new lighting it is so awesome so awesome and look at a sh when a ship passes by look at that it casts shadows down here see that and that ship is so big Look at that, look at that, look at that, how the shadows work. Isn't that cool? That's awesome, right? Well, yes and no, because number one, look at the edge of this shadow. I mean, holy crap, it goes all down here, it goes here, and up here and here. That is a terrible shadow edge. Oh my gosh, that is such low quality. Now, 
that's because I'm far away. That's the level of detail. But even as I get closer to it, you can see that it's blocky. As I move back and forth, the edge of that texture is blocky. They really need to fix their soft shadow edges so bad. Even at this distance, this is actually still pretty bad, even at this distance, going along there. And so all, that's what all this bright lighting, look at his shadow. I mean, look at the look at the low detail in the shadows. I mean, that really bothers me. It really bothers me. That's all I'm going to see now is how bad the shadows are. Seriously, look at that shadow. That is ridiculously horribly bad. For a game of for for I mean, I understand when this game came out, but even in even in that day, what was it, 2009, 2010? Even then they had better shadow capability. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> My first comment when I came into this room was, I guess Admiral Quinn must have to wear sunglasses in here. <laughs> I mean, look how bright it is, although I think that makes sense. It is pretty cool. Now I'm going to take a bigger look at this lighting stuff in an up in an in a future episode. I can't really do that right now, but in a future episode I will do that, and we'll go take a look at not just ESD but a whole bunch of other places too. I think the server is about to come down. Yeah, I got ten minutes or less. No, I got seven minutes. Sorry guys, I'm recording this right before another patch update. So I really don't have much time here. Um, let me do one thing since I don't have a lot of time. And let's head to K13. Let me show you where K13 is physically located. Boy, that noise is pretty loud. I hope that's not bothering you guys on the, uh, on the microphone. I don't know if it is or not. But outside, I mean, even through my headphones, the noise outside that I hear it is so loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to the Alpha Quadrant. Well, I don't even need to jump there because all i got to do is go this way. <laughs> Let's go to the Alpha Quadrant. And where you want to go to access K-13 is you want to go to this little planet way at the top corner called 20 Draconis. So as you can see, Alpha Quadrant. And at the very top here, you've got... Um, you got the Lucari homeworld here, Lucari system. Okay, Ferenginar is right beside it. Um... You've got the uh, Zincathi somewhere. There's the Zinketh system down there. Uh, but the one we're interested in is this one here, 20 Draconis, which is right by the Breen system, very close to the Breen system. So we'll just have to wait till we get there. And that is where you will find K13, if you're curious. Now, of course, you can't beam down to it yet until you unlock a certain point in your fleet holding, but that's where you'll find it. So just a quick recap, because the server I think is going to shut down on me in about five minutes here. Um, the, a quick recap, the things you can do is go play the new mission, figure all that out. If you're in a fleet, start your K-13 holding and check that out. Um, make sure to turn on the new lighting system and just enjoy the new graphics there. Um, and gosh I think that's like pretty much it <laughs> I mean there's this is not a huge update there's no new STFs I was just making sure there's no new STFs so there's nothing new there to play no new red alerts no, no nothing else there however there have been mission updates and what I'm going to do because I know the server is about to shut down on me five minutes here before it shuts down on me what I'm going to do is uh, I will transition to the web and we will do our final look and go over those patch notes I told you about. 
this is very important stay tuned for that because um, in those patch notes there is explained some updates to missions uh, in missions that are already in the game and you want to uh, you want to be aware of that so if I go to enter k13 space this is where k13 will be and here you can see there's a planet um, we're in a, a debris field basically the rings of the planet and here's the space station this is the new space station and there are comets that fly by they're actually enemies you can fire on them they will occasionally hit you. like that there's a good example they will occasionally hit your ships <laughs> and the starbase because they are bad things <laughs> bad bad asteroids as you can see k13 is pretty um pretty messed up it's obviously it's been it's been ravaged by asteroids here for a very long time 140 years so um well, it's been 140 years it's actually been here a lot longer than that you're gonna find out oh that was a huge one Did you see that holy crap something that size now would have taken out the station completely come on but anyway that's where you want to go for your k13 and of course I can't go there now can't beam down or anything to it yet but once I can I will and we'll do that so yeah, as I was mentioning, there are story updates, like under the Klingon War and stuff like that. They've done something to these missions, and uh, they've, they've made updates, like new waypoints and stuff like that. I don't know, new voice acting, I think, as well, new voiceovers for a lot of these early missions. So that should be interesting, but the patch notes tell you all about it, and I do want to go read that. So since the server is about to shut down on me now, it's a good time to go ahead and um, exit out of the game and so what I'm going to do now is transition over to the web we're going to take a look at the uh, patch notes and just kind of glance over those and uh, see what's new there just so we are sure of everything that's new with this patch and then I will conclude and that will be the end of this video so hold on real tight and I will make that transition Okay, welcome back everybody. Here I am in the Star Trek Online release notes for October 25th. This is the Artifacts Update Patch. As you can see, the new featured episode, Echoes of Light, is here. Can played by captains who are level 10 or higher. So that is the thing we already went over. Go play that. The new fleet holding, K-13. Um, is restoring it, um, advancing your fleet holding will also grant many incredible new options for equipping a player's ship and crew as well as improving some of the core options available to captain and fleet mates. So there you go, K-13. The kit revamp. Kits and kit modules have been revamped to change how kit, kits work. Characters no longer put kit modules into a kit but directly equip them on their status page. Kits now only give passive skill increases. Kits with unique effects will continue to provide those effects. Kit modules can still be equipped to give distinct abilities. Characters may now equip five kit modules regardless of level. The distinctions between fabrication, mechanic, research, medic, and st strategic assault kit modules has been removed. I'm very happy for that. Uh, so everybody's going to get five kit modules regardless of your level. You're just going to have five kit modules to slot. Kits and most kit modules can now be upgraded. Kits can be upgraded to a maximum of Mark 14 gold quality. Standard kit modules can be upgraded to a maximum of Mark 14 ultraviolet, so whatever a standard kit module is can only be upgraded to Mark 14 ultraviolet, not gold. Kits modules from lockboxes, reputations, and the winter summer event can be upgraded in the Mark number, but not the quality. So that's what I was talking about. Oh, that one, those can only be in mark level, not quality. All copies of these kit modules will be set to gold quality. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's why. Specialization kit modules, as well as crystalline spike, jam subspace transmissions, chroniton jolt, and subspace drift cannot be upgraded. So see, there are some kit modules that can't be upgraded. Those are called specialization kit modules. They are the crystalline spike 
jam subspace transmission, chroniton jolt, and subspace rift. And then anything new that comes out after that, I'm assuming. Kit modules can now share, now show a recharge time on their tooltips. So there's some things to know about the kit revamp. The graphics update. The visual graphics quality has been improved to meet the standards of DX11 compatible cards. This upgrade includes a host of new lighting technologies, which will significantly improve in the visual quality and is in line with the visual quality released on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Players who have DX9 or DX10 only graphic cards will still be able to play, but not benefit from the updated lighting. In the graphics tab option, you've got the lighting 2.0. You can uh, turn that on or off, obviously. On is what you want for the best quality. Dynamic lighting updates light based on environment. You also want to make sure that's on as well. And here's some other general stuff. Um, this is going to get a little lengthy here, especially as you can see under content. Uh, bear with me. I'll try to skim through this as quickly as possible, but this is real important because there are, there are a lot more new things here than I th originally thought. Each character has been granted 12 additional inventory slots for free. That's a biggie right there. Everybody's got new inventory slots, so go enjoy that for free. Players must be at least level 10 to purchase Master Keys now. Players must be at least level 10 to join a PvP match. The Galaxy map is disabled for 23rd Century Captains before entering the present timeline. Uh, enabled ship registry number for 23rd century captains resolved an issue where 23 century captains would play 23rd century normal federation b mount animations and just a whole bunch of other resolved things which are good L uh, more bug fixes uh some things like frequency remodulator we're not playing for 23 century ca captains i i recognize that they fixed that content here's some important stuff guys the primary missions found on New Romulus are now in its own episode arc called New Romulus in the episode journal. I, did, I didn't look at that, but I will next time I log into the game. So we need to go to the mission journal and uh, see, uh, we should see all the story arcs now for New Romulus under that. That is way cool because now we can keep track of them and we, and we can know what is all there on New Romulus. I think a lot of people have maybe forgotten New Romulus even exists at this point. It's been out so long now. There's a lot of missions and things to do on New Romulus. I think that's going to help people keep track of it a lot better. The primary missions found on Kobali Prime have been added to the Delta Quadrant story arc in the episode journal. So they did the same thing with Kobali Prime. That's also good. We can keep track of those missions. So New Romulus and Kobali Prime, better tracking of the missions. I like that. Minor updates throughout the Federation tutorial have been made to make progression smoother, such as moving some contacts and objects to easier access locations, increasing interact size, and increasing some waypoints. So they've updated the tutorial. They've, I mean, they've basically just gone through and cleaned it up a bit. It's very nice. They've added more voiceovers throughout the first 20 levels of content in the Federation arc. That's a biggie right there. In the first 20 levels of this game now on the Federation, there is a lot more voiceover. That's cool. That's a big one. I mean, that's something I didn't see coming. So that's a big change right there. You're not going to immediately see, of course, unless you are playing those missions or you are, you know, rolling a new character. They've also added more waypoints for mission steps in episodes, such as The Hunt is On, Tradecraft, Blood of the Empire, so new waypoints. That's also an addition that I didn't see coming. They updated the minimum rank on Federation 2800 missions to match the previous Cardassian missions, as well as the Klingon equivalents. Task Force Hippocrates, Hippocrates, not Hippocrates, Hippocrates. Always had a trouble with that word. <laughs> Resolve an issue where enemy ships could get stuck in asteroids. So these are now fixes that they've done. Stranded in space. Resolve an issue where sometimes the Orion Slave Master battleship would teleport away. So just a whole bunch of things under each of these missions. Look at all the missions that they've changed or resolved. Stranded in space. Diplomatic orders. Research and rescue. I guess the first 20 missions. Look at all of that. I'm not going to read all of that. But if you guys want to come here and see what they've done to each mission, then come read this because holy crap, that's a lot, guys. 
So they have made some changes here to missions. So it should be a lot smoother now. That's that's big. Again, that's not something you're going to see at end game because you don't play those missions anymore. But if you're rolling a new character, you certainly will. Or new people playing the game certainly will. But here's some other things down here, I guess, for the STFs. Um, infected space queue. Information contact window uses correct bridge officer headshots. Information contact window and many contacts now play for all players on a team and should no longer interrupt cloak. Um, the Sedeus, they've done system patrol updates too. Resolve issues in patrol updates. Temporal ambassador resolved an issue where skirts were not being overridden by the Tholian workforce costume. Added a ship repair officer and a medical treatment officer to Starbase 39. Cleaned up the beam down and depart system messages in the Enigma, Enigma Nebula. Resolved an issue where textures were missing in the Koida system. So a whole bunch of content fixes and patches and updates here. So that's huge. I mean, that's a lot of them too. A lot. So this is a bigger update than I thought it was. For sure. And then look at all these system updates too. I didn't see any of this. This is like a huge huge like bug fix patch really fleet holdings the various item requirements such as torpedoes blah 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 except for contraband has been converted into a single energy credit entry removed any duty officer input requirements and all reputation projects and increased the dilithium input requirements updated the speed of non targetable torpedoes to be faster the speed of targetable torpedoes has not changed. Resolved an issue that has caused the Kelvin lockbox uniforms, blah, blah, blah. Adding power tag messages for entropy builders and finishers. Oh, man. I mean, I, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm just glancing through it now. The Nahydrin Destroyer and its T5U variant now has three de device slots inside of t instead of two. They've actually increased the device slots on a ship. Wow. That's weird that they would do that, but okay. I don't see the point. <laughs> Starfleet captains can now remove the prefix of the Tholian mesh weaver. Um, resolved an issue where the pre-fire chamber and directed energy distribution manifold consoles had significantly higher upgrade requirements. Oh, didn't even know that. Resolved an issue where some toss disruptors were using an incorrect weapon proc whole bunch of fixes there nice character fixes too resolved an issue where many starting costume parts for Romulans had color choices which did not affect the costume um, the names for Klingon skin on male and female have been changed to match other races name formatting removed a pink color option that was in the purple group for the Intel color palette <laughs> okay that's a small thing but I am glad they finally repaired it <laughs> or fixed it a UI updates here too. Reputations are now hidden until the player is level 50. So you will not even see the reputations until you're level 50. You will not know they're there. Wow. Resolve an issue where the medical bay would not list 23rd century bridge officers in the drop down menu. Promote, demote, mute, and kick options now refresh the channel admin UI. The C store now closes itself if open during the login screen whole bunch of things here rewards and requirement boxes are now fixed size player name is now listed in fly in text for when trade is canceled between two partners um, admiralty school is no longer display blah 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 the trade window now requires both players to confirm the trade after both have accepted oh so a little redundancy there in confirmation just to make sure that both parties really meant to accept interesting okay animation updates slight animation updates to the following the herald staff weapon one of my faves interacting with chairs Ooh, i'd like to see what they've done with that federation tutorial cutscenes. the caleb death holding weapons when moving forward and backward forward sprint contact dialogue animations melee attacks Batleth combo power. Dead Unding no, long, no longer move. Worf's brows no longer cover his eyes in some windows. 
eyes no longer occasionally pop out when a player sits down. Oh my god, was this really a problem, guys? I have never seen that one. If I have, if I had ever seen that bug, I would probably scream or freak out. Can you imagine? Eyes no longer occasionally pop out when a player sits down. Sitting down would cause your eyes to pop out. How insane was that bug? I want to know what that looks like now. Does, has anybody captured that in a video on YouTube? Let me know. Put a link down in the, in the comments. Let us all know. I want to see a video of eyes popping out now with characters sitting in chairs in Star Trek Online. That has got to be a thing somewhere. I had no idea that was a bug. That's really crazy, guys. <laughs> wow. Resolved an issue where sometimes character faces will have the wrong expression and the shattering harmonic sword animates when it fires now. I'll have to check that out. So that is a, hu a huge amount of fixes and updates and patches and things here. So artifacts is a lot more than just a featured episode in K-13 and the kit revamp. We thought it was just that, but no, as you can see, there's a ton of stuff here. So if anybody tells you this is a small update or there's not a lot here, uh, go tell them to read the patch notes because there is a lot of stuff here. They just don't know it. I'm afraid that the, those facts may not get across to some people, but there it is. There's a whole lot of things here. So that is really cool. I look forward to, uh, you know, the next, the next big thing. Who knows when or what it will be, but I'm always looking forward to the next thing. Um, I guess until then, we will just keep repeating Echoes of Light to get the space stuff and uh, work on K-13. And then um, I will just await, you know, the next mission, whatever that's going to be. As for videos planned, I definitely plan to look further at the lighting system to go around all the different places in the galaxy and compare between the what it used to look like with the lights off or lighting 1.0 compared to the lighting 2.0 that way you guys will get to see um, versus versus you'll be able to see the old one versus the new one and see what the lighting updates have changed i want to do an, a big video on that that's going to take a lot of time to put together but i still i want to do that so uh, there is a plan for me to do that i also like I said, I want to explore K-13 once it's all unlocked, but we can't do that yet. But I'm probably going to start a series on taking a tour of all the fleet star bases so you can see what items are available in those things if you are not aware of them. And then that'll lead right into K-13, so that'll be nice. Um, also, I um, have a lot more to do on um, ship reviews, of course. To work on so we'll keep going with that as well and any other updates to my characters I make along the way we'll just see what happens Wow I'm um, I'm excited to see where the new featured episode series goes really am I, I was I wish we had more than one mission but I guess one mission is better than no missions well, everybody, I guess that's where I'm going to end this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. And now you know exactly what you can do with the new artifacts update in Star Trek Online. So go forth and do something. <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.